Good morning to you, my friends. I'm Cork, and this is Plasma, and today is day two of making an arcade. I have to come up with a catchy title for this series, but that'll do for now. So, in between, now in the last episode, I did a little bit more work, because I didn't want to bog down uh, episodes and just bloat them with uh, adding floor and walls and a roof. So I went ahead and did that myself, and I'm actually very glad that I did. Because while Plasma is a very powerful game, has lots of tools in it, some things are a little less than intuitive. Um, or maybe it's just because I'm not good at using these systems, but I was happy for the opportunity to learn some of the intricacies um, in this game. When it comes to placing big blocks in uh, repeating patterns. So let me show you what I ended up with. We've got a very large transparent building. I thought that that was a very nice... Uh, we've also got a little bit of an internal tree that is intentional. Uh, that was part of the plan, the design from the beginning. If you weren't on board with that, you should be getting with the program. So you can see I've got lights in here so that even when it's nighttime, you can still play and have a good time in the arcade. It doesn't matter if it is dark or light. And uh, let me tell you, it took a long time to build this. Um, longer than it should have, but as I said, I was uh, pleased to get the opportunity to uh, investigate the intricacies and all kinds of things with Plasma. So I feel like it was worth the time that I invested in it. Now it's not perfect. There are some, there are some imperfections, but it's nothing that is game breaking. Now speaking of games, I think it's time to work on the second attraction to be placed into this arcade. I think I want to work on one of those things that I was talking about last time, uh, the coin pusher. Now that is a game that is basically, if you don't know, it's a little cabinet, kind of like the claw machine, and it's got a little, like, l like a little shelf that's pushing in and out, and all along the top of it and around are coins. Now what you do is, like, while you are in an arcade and you're earning tokens and stuff, you're earning coins, you put them into the machine, or in some places you buy them separately, you put them into the machine, and then, like, they drop down into the shelf. And the idea is to add coins to the pile so that you can use the shelf and the coins you put in to push coins off. And any coins that fall off the shelf are ones that you get to keep. So the idea is you put coins in to hopefully get more coins out. Now, this is probably going to be a pretty complicated device. But I'm here for the challenge. That's the whole point. And there's a couple bits to it that I've been thinking about. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to, uh, what the solution to the problem is going to be. But that is why I'm doing this. Because I want to push my knowledge of this game. So firstly, we need to design the base of this thing. Now it's going to have to have some kind of a slot for the uh, pieces to go into. So I need to actually make it more than just a block. It needs to be something tailor-made for this. So there has to be room for a shelf and coins to be pushed. But down here, I think we'll do like... Can I do slants in this? Of course I can do slants. I can do anything I want because of this. Yeah, look at that. Okay, um, let's make this a little bit smaller. And then we will move it to... Just about there looks nice. And can we duplicate this? We can. Let's just put it over here and then turn it like this and then put it here. That looks pretty good for a little shoot. Now what I'm thinking is, we'll turn the friction of these way down so that we don't get things sticking on it, you know? I don't want anything sticking on the ramp down. It'll just slip on through and go into the uh, prize spot. Now... What would happen to coins that get pushed over here? Hmm? I guess we should probably widen it, you know? Now, that's a lot of real estate, if I'm being honest. But you know what? It's okay. This one goes up a little bit more. It probably should be down. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of space. Maybe it's too much. Maybe the machine itself is too wide. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll do. 
Now let's put a block on the side. Fresh, please. And just make a little wall. That's perfect. And we just take one of these, put it over here, and boom. We've got the base of the coin pusher done. This is the easy part. <laughs> Trust me, guys. It's going to get a lot more complicated from here. Um, so... I think what we'll start working on, I, this is probably going to have to be a multi-step process in and of itself. But what I want to do is get the actual pushing device made today. So what we're going to need is a back wall for this thing. Now it doesn't have to be transparent, I don't think. I think it'll be fine if we just do it like this. Now that'll be the back wall of the machine. And connected to that will be some pistons that push. So let's get some of those then. Mechanic... We need, we need, where are you? Frontal extender. We'll just shrink it down to size. That doesn't shrink very much. Huh. We may need some more real estate than this. Okay, hold on. Let's just take one of these. We'll just duplicate the back real quick. And we're just going to shrink it down this way. That looks all right. Plenty of space. Now, I want to have two shelves pushing out. Because that's usually what the coin pushers have. Let's add a... Firstly, let's add a controller so that we can start uh, programming this thing. Put it on the back so it's not an eyesore. And then we're going to need a shelf that pushes. Why can't I place? There we go. And boop. We'll make it... Eh, that'll probably be good. And then it needs to be wider. The entire width of the machine. There we go. So that'll be going forward and back. Pushing the coins closer to the edge where I will be able to score. Alright, let's look at this thing. We've got ourselves a frontal extender. Why does clicking sometimes not work? This is getting kind of annoying. Is my mouse dying? It's very possible. I would be very upset if that happened because this is a special mouse that is super quiet when you click it. See, I'm clicking right now. Right next to the microphone. And you definitely can hear that. that, 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 that you, okay, maybe it's not as quiet as I thought. But when it's on the desk, you can't hear it. Why are we talking about my mouse? Anywho, we need this to... Uh, uh, No, I don't need that. Basically, the problem with this is this is something that does not require any inputs. This is something that goes on its own. This pusher device. Problem with that, I'm not exactly sure how to do something like that. You know? Um, before we get kind of crazy with this, I'm going to save the device just for backup. And this will be coin pusher. And that'll just be a quick save just so that if I do something crazy, I can fall back on something that I've already put in. All right. So, okay. How do I make something just go without having any inputs? I'm going to... Search for loop repeater. This might work. So, uh, if I, hmm, I need something to start it though, to start the thing. I need some kind of signal. Repetitions? Uh, can I put it to zero? Uh, define how many repetitions will be performed. Can I make it infinite? What if I do 10,000 million? That should be enough repetitions. So it should repeat target position of, let's say, 5%. I don't really know what that's going to be in terms of like distance and stuff. But now I'm just going to put, I'm going to put a button on just for clarity. So I know what's going on. Maybe there should be something to start the machine. It's just Instead of just having it sit there in the first place. I don't know. We will discuss this later. We will discuss this later. When pressed, it'll start. Let's see what that does. A bop. Oh. Well, that's kind of neat. So it started, but the repetition really isn't doing anything. Oh, done. Um, when it's done, it'll go back to 0%, right? And now repeat. Uh, reset. Uh, whoa, wait. What happened? Why did, 
Why did why, why did my repeater get taken away? What's that? Start. Go to um five percent, and then when it's done, it goes to zero percent. Is that okay? Okay, the repeater's there. Interesting. So this isn't quite doing what I expected it to do. I think the done thing was causing a problem. Yeah, that made it so it didn't do anything at all. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. On the button pressed, both of them will start. When this one elapse, it'll go to target position of... Wait, no, no, no. When the timer is done, it'll go to target position of 5%. When this one is done, it'll go to target position of 0%. This one is going to be 1 second. This one is going to be uh, 7 seconds. Let's see what that does. Oops, need to reset the position. And make sure my nodes are still there. Oh. And? Oh my. It's doing it. It's very slow. It did it once. Huh. See, what's going on right now is the first timer goes, pushes it out. The second timer goes, but it's only for a split second. So then it goes straight back to the first timer. Ugh. This is not exactly the solution I was hoping for. As I said... This is a personal challenge for me, because I love this game, but I stink at it. And I want it to get to the point where I could do things like this without having to search things up. So, trial and error is the way to go for me. I found this node called a timeline. Maybe this is what I need. Instead of a timer, a timeline. So, the button will start it. And then trigger one will be 9% at one. Trigger two will be at two seconds and it will be zero. Can I loop this? Oh. I was excited there for a second. I thought it was going to loop. Now, why didn't it? Controls whether the timeline should start again after the last signal has been output. Oh, I guess it has to go through all of them. Okay. I wish I could get rid of some of them, but I can program them all. That is fine. If that's what I need to do, I will do it. And that will be... I need to add more seconds to it. So that'll be four. And then that'll be six. And then that'll be H, 7, 8, 78, and this'll be 10? No! And finally, 14 hours, 14 seconds. And then this one will be 9%, and this one will be 0, and this one will be 9%. And this one will be zero. Okay, I think I've got it. No! Wait, it's doing it. Wait, it's doing it? What is it doing? What? It's so slow. Why is it so slow? Am I not understanding? It defines the time that should pass before outputting a signal to trigger port 2. Does the timer only start... Wait, does the timer only start after... This, the one before it goes? Do they all need to be 2? No, okay. I think that might solve the problem. Let's start it. Uh-huh. Oh? Oh! Guys? I think it's working. I think it's working. Now let's just see how long it will go. Will it keep going indefinitely? Whoa. 
Okay, so that was it re returning to the beginning of the loop. Because the first one is one second. <gasps> Guys, I did it! I did it! I was actually losing sleep over this last night, thinking, oh man, I don't know how to make a loop. I did it! I made a loop! It's working! It is working! I've got the basis of a coin pusher right here. That's fantastic. I never expected it to actually work like that. Okay, now this button is a little bit annoying right there, so let's put it there. Guys, that's awesome! Also, I was kind of wondering what I would use for coins, because in this game they have coins. Let's just, let's just put one in here. Not going to be part of the machine. I just want to, I want to move it. Here we go. Um, come here. Eh, eh, put it here. Can I shrink it? Can I shrink this thing? No, I can't shrink it. It looks like it's probably a good size. Let's turn it on. I mean, it's not gonna get pushed. That actually is a pretty good size. Let me see if it'll slip. Oh, like a charm. No sticking at all. That's great. So, we push this over here, and it's like... Eh. It works! It pushes coins! That's what it's designed to do! Okay! Okay! I'm very happy with this. I'm very happy with this. Now, if you don't know coin pushers, now you can kind of see the idea. You keep adding coins so that this coin will get pushed further off, and then you collect them yourself. What do we need now? I think I'm going to start working on a window for the sides. That'll be the paneling, the glass. Okay, I can set the opacity here. Good. I wish I could go a little bit higher because it still makes things dark inside. Dark and spooky, and I don't like it. This is fun time arcade. No. There we go. I want people to come into the arcade and be like, Wow, this isn't spooky at all. I don't feel like I'm about to be attacked by a horrible monster. Because that isn't true. There are no monsters in this arcade. Yet. Okay, so now I need some way to insert a coin and have it go into the machine. Hmm, how do I do that? That is going to be a little bit more tricky. I want to be able to, like, have the player choose from a few locations where they want the coin to be dropped. Like, left, right, middle. Okay, that's the front of the machine. So, no cheating. No cheating going on here. Also, though, I do need it to be slightly lower. So that up here is the, like, coin inserting place. That's where I will put the coins. I need to set the opacity down on these two. Nope, that one's good. Up here will be where you choose where you want to put the coin. How am I going to do this? Okay, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I will take a claw. I will have them sitting here. How small can I make these? Uh, that's all right. I'll have them sitting up here on the top. I'll put a coin in there and press a button and the claw will grab it, go back, and then release the coin in the selected spot. We'll have one here, here, and here. Oh, that's going to be cool. Good. Okay, so that's two, three, and four. Good. Then those will have a claw attached to them. You know what? Uh, timer. Timer, you're go- mm, Timer. You are going in my favorites. Not elapsed. Done. It'll go to target position of... I don't know. What is fully extended towards the... Let's say... Let's, let's put in 60 and see what it does. So, press it. And after 6 seconds, it should go to... 60. Whoa! Okay. Um, that's a little bit more. Let's go to 55, down 5%. Let's set the timer down to three, just to make it a little bit more snappy. Press the timer. All right, it goes down to zero. Getting warmer, and then, oh yes. Perfect. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so what we need 
Is this to be on a little bit more of a timer? Three. No, not three. Let's do two. Enough time for the claw to go, uh, we don't need these things flying around. Let's just set this. It goes back, it'll drop the thing, and then return to its original position. Yes! Okay, now we need to get the claw in on this business. Button press, timer start, timer done, go to target position of zero, timer will be on six seconds, no, just like the other one over there. So let's just see. Button press, it'll close, it goes back. Oh, I didn't have a... I didn't have a claw... Hmm... Okay, hold on. We need this to be less. Hold on, hold on. It has to be less time... Okay, button close. Wall, claw close, go back. Open. And then... Yes! Okay! Also, I'm realizing... This is gonna go back a little too far, isn't it? It'll drop it behind this cloth, which is why I wanted two pushers. Hmm. I should have two pushers, shouldn't I? I should. I really should. Okay, this is where we need to get this device saved again. Just in case. So here's what's gonna happen. We're going to add this guy right back here. Just gonna shrink him down a little bit. We're gonna make sure he's on a level that is the same as the one inside, which means going up one. Correct? Yes, okay. That is on the exact same level. Now we just need more of them. We're just gonna make a platform across, just through the controller, it's fine. It's a robust device, it'll be okay. Now, if I take one of these, nope, nope, just a block, please. I'm just gonna shrink this guy down, and we're just gonna extend it across. There we go. Now, this is a protrusion. It's quite ugly, but it's necessary, and it will be hidden. It will be hidden by something, okay? I will hide it. Now I'm gonna need another little wall. Just gonna extend it this way. There we go. And a frontal extender. And then we just need another one of these. Another pusher. We're just gonna stick it on there. Yes. But this one's going to be a little bit longer. Like that. And it will go all the way into the wall and then push out. Actually, it will not if it's like that. Uh, we need it to be more like that. That's perfect. Okay, this is good. Now I just need to, so this is frontal extender five. Now I'm just gonna have to make another one of these. That's fine. That is fine. We can use the same button. Can I use the same timer? Wait, I can use the same timer, can't I? <gasps> Hold on. Let's save on space and use the same timer. Put max speed way down. Like that. And then button push. Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay. Okay. It is going a little faster than the other one. So let's set it down even more. Oh, this is good. Maybe even a touch more. It's okay if they're not exactly lined up. There we go. Look! I've got a coin pusher thing! It's working! Oh my, this is nice. I'd like it to- I'd like the top one to push out a little bit more. Hmm. But to do that, I'd need to make a separate timeline. So you know what? We're just gonna do that. I'm gonna bite the bullet. Let's just try 12%. I just want to see what that does. Okay, we could even do a little bit more than that. We could even do a little bit more than that. 14%. Okay. 
That's good. That's good. So we'll make the value of this one uh, 14%. Timers on all of these are going to be two. We're so close, guys. Now I just need to alternate these. That one's zero. This one, 14. This one, zero. This one, 14. I hope I don't mess any of this up because this is a little confusing. This one, 14. And this one, zero. Okay. I think we are good. Let's turn on loop. Make sure that we don't mess anything up there. Press the button. There we go. Yes. Yes. The coin pusher is working. Oh my, look at that. That's so cool. This worked so much better than I thought it would. Oh my goodness. I'm very, very happy with this. Okay, let's save this again. One more time. Another little backup. That's perfect. Okay, I have been recording for a while now, so I think I'm going to have to call this here. But I'm very happy. Next time, we'll finish up the coin grabbers on the top, make it a little bit better, and then work on a way to collect the coins from the bottom, make a little shoot. And then we'll install it into the arcade, and eventually I'll get to the point where I have a little store where you can take the tokens you've gotten and buy stuff and all kinds of really cool things. It's going to be awesome. But that'll be for next time, and until then... I hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode of Plasma. If you did, leave a like. If you haven't already and you would like to, subscribe to see more Plasma and all the other things I post right here on this channel. And as always, guys, in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.